All right, welcome to another lesson. In today's lesson, we're learning all about power chords, how to use them, when to use them, and some cool things we can do with them. So let's get into it. So first of all, what is a power chord? For our definition of what it's gonna be, it's gonna be the use of three strings and pretty much one shape that can play all the power chords that we need. So here's what I'm talking about. Let's say we're on the sixth string, fifth fret. So sixth, fifth. If this is the root or the lowest note of my chord, a power chord is going to be built on these three strings, on string six, string five, and string four. And what I'm doing here is I'm playing the fifth fret on the sixth string, and then fret seven for strings five and four. So I have fifth fret, seventh fret, and seventh fret. So I get that shape and I'm using my pointer, my ring and my pinky and the middle one, that's kind of debatable where you can put it, but it's okay to put it on top of that first finger, especially if you want to give it a little extra support to push down. So you could definitely do that. But this is our power chord shape. So again, on the sixth string, I have fifth fret on the fifth string seven and on the fourth string seven. So this shape, the power chord shape, uh, once we have our shape, this moves anywhere on the guitar. And we can use this all over the sixth string. So we can go uh, fifth fret, fourth fret, third, second, first. And we could even go open, which would look like that, which is actually an E minor if we were to strum all six chords, all six strings. But since we're only focusing on three strings, it's not minor or major, it's just an E power chord. So it can be played over major and minor and it doesn't affect it. So again, when we have this shape, started on the third fret of the sixth string, this is my G note. So this makes this whole power chord a G power chord. And, and when I'm strumming, I'm gonna use my pick and only focus on six, five, and three. So I'm really gonna try to get these three. focused on my strumming. That's if I'm on the sixth string. So just practicing on the sixth string a couple times uh, on that third fret, this is G. There it is one at a time, but all together would be. That's our G. Uh, so if we're just finding notes around here, uh, if I go to the fifth fret, this would be A power chord. If I go to the seventh, so five, six, seven, I move my whole shape. So right here I'm on seven and nine, nine. So seven, nine, nine fret wise and on string six by four. But it's just that same shape that I'm moving up and down. And you can go as, as far as your fingers allow you to go. Mine are kind of thick. So when I go higher here, they get, the frets get a little too small for me, but if you can go that high, awesome. So those are our power chords based on the sixth string. If we make power chords based on the fifth string, the same shape is going to apply. So let's say we go to the fifth string, third fret. This is our C notes and it comes from our, when we're playing our C chord. This bottom note is C. So when we do our power chord shape, we're gonna be on strings five, four, and three. So on fret three and on fret five and five. So string five, four, three, and fret three, five, five. This fret distance is always gonna stay the same. There's always gonna be a fret in the middle that's gonna be our little spacer. So again, and your middle finger can just go on top of that first finger help or if you can just hold it out in the middle uh, but you don't want to tuck it under because when you put your finger under you create more tension and stress in your hand and you want to be as relaxed as possible and what I do what you're gonna have to do eventually is with the middle finger you're actually gonna want to touch the sixth string and touch it so soft that you're not playing it but you're muting it so the sixth string is open here but my middle finger is gonna lightly touch it so I don't hear that so that when I'm playing the C power chord, my middle finger is muting the sixth string just in case I accidentally strum it with the pick. Uh, my middle finger is muting it. 
Um, so that's something that I'll get worked on. But for now, if you can just do the three, uh, the three on the five four three, and focus on the five four three here, that'll be fine too. So finding some more notes on this fifth fret, we're gonna have C. If we go up to the fifth fret, we have D. If we go up to the seventh fret, and when I say seventh fret, I'm leading with my pointer. So wherever this goes, these other two fingers will follow. So I have C on the third fret. On the fifth fret, I have D. On the seventh fret, I have E. On the ninth fret, I have F sharp. On the tenth fret, one up is G. So G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A. And again, A, just like the A that we do, that's a major open chord, but if we're just doing the three strings, the fifth, fourth, and third, that becomes our power chord. So when it comes to playing power chords, we will usually use them for rock songs. Like for example, we're playing, if we're playing uh, uh, Casa de Dios, we'll do power chords. D, A, B, For rock songs, power chords can usually get played. So another pattern that we're gonna be able to use with power chords is uh, picking. And this picking pattern is kind of, comes from the idea of tresillo, which means a grouping of three. So what we're grouping in three is gonna be this. I'm gonna take a C power chord, uh, third, uh, fifth string, third fret. So those are my notes. Yours should sound like this. Uh, and just like I did an arpeggio here, Playing one string at a time, five, four, three, five, four, three. The pattern is this. It doesn't matter what three strings you're on, it's gonna be bottom, middle, top, bottom, middle, top, bottom, top. So it's kind of like a grouping of three, three, and two. And I'll put something on the screen. So we have this, bottom, middle, top, or we have this, and I'm gonna say the string number. So we have five, four, three, five, four, three, five, three. And then we go to the next chord, we can go to D. And we go five, four, three, five, four, three, five, three. So the next pattern we're gonna be doing is, so the next pattern we're gonna be doing, it's gonna break the rhythm up a bit and give us some more melody. And all we're doing is with those three notes that we're playing, we're gonna have uh, a little melody coming out of that using this this pattern. It's a grouping of three, three, and two. So here's what it looks like. Uh, I'll let you know what the string numbers are. So we have our C power chord. We're gonna play each note individually. Uh, and the pattern is this. So we're gonna go five, four, three, five, four, three, five, four. So we have five, four, three, five, four, three, five, four. So it's three, three, and two. And all those together add up eight counts. So we have six plus two, eight counts. So what you would do or how you would use that if you don't want, if you want to play something different than just rhythm, you could do this arpeggio pattern, which would be five, four, three, five, four, three, five, four, and then switch. turns into a little, it's rhythmic, but it's more melodic. And you can do this on the sixth string too. Any power chord is gonna work. So that's a little kind of exercise, but it, it could be a pattern that could be used, especially if there's more than one guitar. One would be playing some kind of power chord, and the other one could be doing that kind of pattern. Just to kind of fill in different um, textures, different sounds in music. And the last thing we need to talk about when it comes to power chords is that whenever we are playing them, there's two ways of playing them. We can play them 
just strumming them open. And the other way is to play them palm muted. So that, that is what this sounds like. This is palm muting. So what palm muting is, it's really what it sounds like. You're muting the strings with your palm. So all of this is happening with this side of your uh, your right hand. Uh, so when you're when you're strumming, you're actually going to rest the side of your palm close to where the strings touch the bridge. And you'll you'll notice, you'll hear it, um, and it's kind of it's something it's a new position to get used to but you'll hear it if you put your hand behind your strings and you strum you'll hear that they're vibrating freely but as you move forward on the strings and you're only going to move in here but i'm making the movement bigger as you move forward they're going to get muted like if you put something over the strings which is your palm and you want that effect so here's open and i'm going to slide my palm up this way making sure that my palm is touching the three strings that i'm that i'm uh fingering on this side so if i play it open and i slide in you hear that closing up and if you back it up they open up again and if you go forward again you'll mute them and there's going to be a sweet spot where you want them to barely start muting. Because if you go too forward, you lose the actual sound that you're fretting. So if you're too far forward, it's not going to sound like the chord you're playing. But if you back it up, you're going to start hearing that the notes sound like the note you're playing, just muted. And that's called palm muting. And the way we use that is, for example, if we're playing a song, uh, a rock song or something heavy, something would drive. If we're in the verse, the soft part, we would play palm mute. So we would play palm mute, make sure it's soft. And when it comes to the chorus, we would open up and play with more volume. Back to the verse, we're going to soften up and it gets soft. Texture changes kind of more pokey it's not it doesn't have sustain because when I play it I'm killing the vibration so I'm killing the sound but when it's open it lasts for a while so that's two ways of playing power chords you can play them open or palm muted and I'm putting my palm if you can see my strings here I'm pretty much putting them right where the strings come out from the bridge section the saddles and on acoustic guitar is the same thing Wherever they come out of that white um, saddle and they start touching and start floating, that's where you want to start putting your palm. And it would look something like that. Just as flat as possible. And then you just have to get used to pivoting uh, a strum while you're palm muting. So that'll be something to practice. But if you get that, then you'd be able to put together the palm muting. You could put together the picking. strumming and if you can do the arpeggio that picking pattern that'll be awesome so that was a quick lesson for today on power chords we did the rhythms the picking open and closed uh, or palm muted and open um, so practice watch this um, every day uh, until you get it and then once you've learned it go back to other videos and go to songs and use power chords instead of open chords so for example if we have for uh, La Unica Razón is like A minor, F, 
C, G. Instead of doing open chords, do power chords. So you would go A, F, C, and G. And then do the uh, palm muting for the verses. And when we go to the chorus, you would open that up. get used to moving this position on the sixth and fifth string to be able to play power chords. So hope you enjoyed. Happy practicing and I'll see you next week.